Professor Rabindra Malik, President of the Discover India Club, students of the India International School Japan and the Global Indian International School, and visiting students of uh, Modern School Delhi, you're also very welcome, as are all ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'd like to convey my very warm greetings to all of you on the occasion of the 148th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi, father of the Indian nation. Mahatma Gandhi not only belongs to India, but to the entire world. As this day is being celebrated in his honor and memory as the International Day of Nonviolence through a United Nations General Assembly resolution. Today's program comprises a keynote address by Dr. Rabindra Malik, skits by students of uh, Indian International School Japan and Global Indian International School on Swachta Hi Seva and the Champaran Satyagraha, respectively. There is also a photo exhibition on Gandhi statues and busts. These are photographs that we have put together uh, of the Gandhi statues and busts that exist all over Japan. It was an endeavor that was undertaken by the Cultural Center. And you will have a chance to have a glimpse of some of these. And there are some pictures of uh, Prime Minister Abe and Mrs. Abe's visit to the Savarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad in the company of the Prime Minister of India. Mahatma Gandhi, as you all know, was at the forefront of India's struggle for independence from colonial rule. His role in the making of modern India is tremendous and far-reaching. He united diverse sections of society and promoted nation building. He advocated Swadeshi or self-reliance, which is today reflected in Government of India's flagship program, the Make in India program. He also campaigned for cleanliness, which is today seen in the Swachh Bharat Abhyan, Clean India Mission, and the Swachhta Hi Seva Initiative, which has been undertaken between uh, September and October this year. Incidentally, this marks the third anniversary of the Swachh Bharat campaign. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that Mahatma Gandhi laid great emphasis on cleanliness. His ashrams too focused on the same. Let us pledge that we will give a clean India as a gift to the father of the nation on his 150th birth anniversary, which falls in 2019. I'm tempted here to say that nothing for a nation is possible without the fullest effort and cooperation of its people. A society can move ahead only if all the people living in that society feel strongly about it and put in their best efforts. There is uh, an ancient Sanskrit saying, Yatha hekena chakrena rathasya gatir bhavat evam purusha karena vina daivam na sinthyati. Just as a chariot can hope to make progress on the basis of the wheels that move, so also there cannot be any progress in society without the wheels of the people, without the wheels of our effort making that happen. So, yatha hekena chakrena rathasya gatir bhavat evam purusha karena vinadaivam na sithyati. And Prime Minister Modi has also said that the entire nation must unite and work together, work hard, put in their best efforts to make all our flagship programs a grand success. So, Purusharth and Udyabhina is very important. Gandhiji also said that, that you must do your best, whatever it is that you are doing. The simplest of jobs has dignity and must be done with the greatest of effort. Udyabhina hi siddhanti karyani na manorathaya na hi suptasya simhasya prakshanti mukhe briga this is another very beautiful Sanskrit saying. Udyamena hi siddhanti karyani. It is only through hard work and effort that you can take a task to its logical conclusion and accomplish things. 
not simply building castles in the air. And even a lion has to hunt, make an effort to chase its prey. The deer is not simply going to come into the mouth of a sleeping lion. Udyamena hi siddhanti karyani na manorathaya na hi suktasya simhasya pravishanti mukhe mrida. I really like the meaning of this and I hope we can all, me as much as you, can imbibe the real meaning of this saying. Mahatma Gandhi's enduring legacy is seen in Satya and Ahimsa, Truth and Nonviolence, which became Gandhiji's constant watchwords. In his experience, they were inseparable concepts and the two sides of the same coin. In this age of strife and growing violence, Mahatma Gandhi's teachings have an abiding relevance. A relevance that resonates in every society and every part of the world today. He taught us coexistence between different religions, ideologies, languages and different levels of economic and social emancipation and development as well. He was perspicacious, he was farsighted, which is evident in his thought and writing. A hundred years ago, he was one of the first proponents to speak of gender equality, sustainable development, environmental protection, which is reflected in what he said. The world is enough for everyone's needs, but not enough for everyone's greed. During the recent visit of Prime Minister His Excellency Shinzo Abe to India in September, I had the privilege of accompanying him, Prime Minister Modi, Mrs. Abe, Mr. Abe to Sabarmati Ashram and to Dandi Kutir. Dandi Kutir is a museum built on the life and teachings of Mahatma Gandhi and the Sabarmati Ashram was home to Mahatma Gandhi from 1917 until 1930, serving as one of the main centers of the Indian freedom struggle. It was from the Sabarmati Ashram on the 12th of March 1930 that uh, Gandhiji launched the famous Gandhi March, 241 miles from the Ashram, in protest of the British Salt Law. Prime Minister Modi, this is something interesting, for those that live in Japan and for our Japanese friends, Prime Minister Modi presented a replica of the famous three wise monkeys known as Sanzaru in Japan uh, to Prime Minister Abe and Mrs. Abe. And the Sanzaru symbolized the teaching, see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. Uh, he did this when they visited the Sabarmati Ashram. In India we associate the Sanzaru with Mahatma Gandhi, but there is a Japan connect as well. The most venerable Nichidatsu Fuji of Nippon San Yogi had presented Gandhiji a gift of the Sanzaru in the 1930s. In this context, I would like to acknowledge uh, Reverend Mikio Asai's presence here today, representing Nippon San Myohoji. I had a very memorable visit yesterday to Akita city, where the Tentokuji Peace Pagoda is a symbol of our Buddhist ties and Buddhist values that we share in common. And at the Tentokuji Peace Pagoda, there was a commemoration event marking the anniversary of uh, the Buddha relics that were first given by India to Japan, to the city of Akita. These were given by the first Prime Minister of India to the Reverend Nichidatsu Fuji, who was fondly called by Gandhiji as Fuji Guruji. And these are enshrined in the Peace Pagoda there. There was a very beautiful ceremony, I attended it, and when I walked into that uh, lovely garden on a lovely day where the Peace Pagoda stands, the welcoming sound was the lilting tunes of Vaishnava Janato being played on the sitar by a Japanese artist. And I could not think of a better combination of both Gandhi and Buddha, the two great people that we have produced in India. What is even more significant is that there is a society for conveying the legacy of Buddha and Gandhi to later generations, also known as the human society, or rather humane society, as I would put it, in Akita city. And so it's astounding that in a distant land like Japan, you have the people of Japan celebrating both the values of Lord Buddha and the values of Mahatma Gandhi. And also intent for all 
practical purposes on ensuring that these values are passed on to the next generation. I cannot think of a better example of what unites us between India and Japan. And today in a world which is fraught with so much of uncertainty, so many challenges, so much of lack of clarity on where we are headed as societies, as people who live with increasing, rapidly evolving levels of technology which brings in their wake opportunities and threats. We are dealing with nation states whose future is not very clear, who also render unclear our own future. At times like this, I think it is for uh, India and Japan to demonstrate to the world that we have these shared values and to use these shared values, the legacy of Lord Buddha, the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi, of peace, non-violence, of the oneness of humanity, to show the way forward, to tell the rest of the world, to tell Asia how to go ahead towards peace, progress and prosperity for all. It is for us, India and Japan, to lead the way. I am very happy that we are able to celebrate uh, this uh, uh, anniversary today, Gandhi Jayanti, uh, with the participation of our Indian schools, all the children who have come here today, our future, as they are, they represent our future. Uh, I also thank the Discover India Club, uh, and this is a significant event because it takes place in 2017, which is the India-Japan Year of Friendly Exchanges. And I do hope that you will enjoy the rest of the program, including the the thoughts uh, that will be shared by Dr. Ravindra Malik. I do hope each one of you will stay on and make the most of the rest of the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador.